What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back again for the reaction of today's great, wonderful, beautiful day. Do you know why? I'll tell you why, because it's another Finland day. Findians, Findians, Finnish American Indians. Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Findians, what does that mean? I'm just... Let's find out. Finnish American Indians. In the late 1800s, due to unemployment, social problems, and the period of Russification before Finland won her independence, thousands of Finns immigrated to the Great Lakes area of North America in search of a better life. I did not know that. I didn't know that. I knew about Sweden and uh, loads of Swedish people moving to North America to to um, escape the the bad stuff that was going on in, in Sweden. But I didn't know about Finnish people moving to North America. Now, that's interesting. They came at a time when the Anishinaabe were just put onto the reservations. And for Finns who wanted to buy some land of their own to settle down and start farming, the land that was available and affordable at the time was near and on reservations. Right. Much of that land was low and waterlogged, which just happened to resemble much of the landscape in Finland. Both cultures had learned to thrive in similar environments. One culture had the sauna, the other had the sweat lodge. One group found multiple uses for cedar, the other used birch. Both the immigrant Finnish population and the native Ojibwe people of northern Minnesota had strong storytelling traditions, and both put great stock in communal living. The two cultures also shared reserved personalities and the tendency to avoid conflict. Both cultures also faced persecution and displacement and exclusion. Finns were forced from their homes when part of the country was ceded to Russia. American Indian populations had been forcibly removed. Both ethnicities were the underdogs in the region. After the Finnish involvement with the mine strikes, the Oliver Mining Company excluded Finns from mining jobs. There were a lot of circumstantial things and similarities in beliefs and mannerisms that nurtured these connections. So it seems to some that it was inevitable that the two groups would mingle, creating a new population of Findians. Wow. <laughs> wow. That does make a lot of sense. You're very similar in the way that you are. This just explained temperament, um, experience, your history. Um, yeah, so you, and obviously be living in the same area or moving to the areas, climate, you know. And now she's saying Findian. So is she saying that there were a lot of intermarriages between the two communities in Minnesota? Let's find out. Liz Chicola is a member of the Fond du Lac Band of Lake Superior Chippewa. Her mother is also a band member and her father is Finnish. Jacola's father grew up on a Finnish farmstead on the Fond du Lac Reservation where he met and married Jacola's mother. My English name is Liz Jacola and my um, Indian name is the lady who knows how to sing. And actually it's the lady who knows how to sing well, um, but I'm always uh, kind of shy to say that. Liz is a musician whose recordings include Findian Summer and Bridging Two Worlds. Some of her music can even be found here on YouTube. Wow. Finnish sisu is a well-known quality in the Great Lakes region. Ojibwe physician Dr. Arnie Vino is an example of this. Arnie had a difficult childhood and adolescence. His father, a Finnish-American, committed suicide when Arnie was just four years old. 
Within the next year, his mother, a full-blooded Ojibwe, started drinking heavily and left his six-year-old sister in charge. They burned the house down and were separated. As a child, he lived in a house without electricity, and they had to climb down into a well to get water. A counselor in high school told him that he was not college material, and he believed him. After high school, Arnie worked as a bartender in several bars, a sawmill, and in construction. So he's half Native American and half Finnish, uh, because... Yeah, I don't like the term American Indian because it's not correct. So he's half Native American, half Finnish. So interested. I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that there were so many intermarriages. Did you guys know that? Let me know in the comment section below if you knew that there was such things as a Findian. However, later in life, he started to find his calling. At age 32, Arnie got into UMD School of Medicine. Unfortunately, his mother passed away the night he graduated residency. He works as a physician on the Fond du Lac Reservation in Minnesota. He has persevered despite the hardships and a life in the midst of two marginalized minorities. He is making a difference in many people's lives every day. Finnish-American Rebecca and Findian Jim Gauboy met in 1990. His mother left Finland in the early 20th century and his father was Ojibwe. Rebecca's father's family left Finland in 1901. The Indians and the Finns are the same. You know, they have the same, they, they know the land the same way, and they, they drink the same way. Rebecca and her husband run a drink, home for abused and way. orphaned Native American children in the Minnesotan backwoods. Most Findians live on reservations. They tend to feel closer to their Native American roots than to their Finnish heritage. Okay. Links with Finland have withered and the majority have never visited. On the reservations, there is a lot of poverty, drug problems, and unemployment. The reservation no longer, however, is a synonym for poverty. There's now more pride in their roots and there's no longer shame attached to a Findian identity. This is like, my, like, you, you think you know the world. You think you know the world. I mean, you don't. I just never knew that Finnish, there were fin, Finnish and Native American people were so similar and then they intermixed and they had children and now there's a whole generation of Finnish and Native American people in America. What? What? Nowadays, many young Findians are interested in both their Ojibwe and Finnish traditions. People who were oppressed tend to have more in common, said Frank Bebo. Bebo is an enrolled member of the White Earth Band of Lake Superior Ojibwe. His grandfather was an American Indian who married a Finnish woman living on the Iron Range. The couple had six children, including Bebo's father, who spoke only Finnish as a boy. Today, Bobo works as the tribal attorney for the Leech Lake Band of Chippewa, and he has a sauna in his backyard. A Both sauna. cultures are comfortable. That's, that's very Finnish, isn't it? A sauna in his backyard. In the woods and have similar attitudes about hunting. When you went hunting, you went with a purpose, Bobo said. You didn't just shoot anything. You took only what you needed. Bobo's father had a saying that seems to draw on sentiments from both cultures. He said... If all your wants are small, you'll have all you want. Sounds like a Finnish... <laughs> it sounds like a Finnish saying. And obviously it's a Native American saying as well. Findians really are the best of both worlds, according to Babo. Wow, I have left watching this video a little bit more knowledgeable. Now I can say there are Findians in America. 
Wow, guys, <laughs> I have no words. I've, I've got nothing to add. That's in, that's incredible. Um, did you know? Like I said, let me know in the comment section below if you knew that this was a thing in America. Thank you very much to my Patreon member who suggested this video. If you'd like to suggest a video, link in the description and on the Patreon page, there's a link to a folder for YouTube where you can suggest a YouTube video for me to react to. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I will see you very soon.